Hello, everyone. My name is Whitney Freya, and I am uh, someone who creates space for forward thinking individuals to live their life as life artists. And I do that by helping them balance their logical mind with their infinite mind in order for them to be able to access even new reservoirs of creative potential. So today I am joined by the most amazing Laura Lee Clark. And she is an author. She's the author of the book, Wire Yourself for Wealth. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's published right. <laughs> okay, good. Published by Hay House. And she and I met at Awesomeness Fest in Mexico. And the first time we Skyped, um, she was in her office here. And she had this mostly blank wall with like this little white framed piece. And I'm looking at her. And I'm Which like, just, <laughs> right, we're going to show you. So, so. I'm looking at her and I'm like, okay, this woman is so much more powerful than that blank blue wall with the little tidy white picture frame there. And so I got her really excited to do an energy makeover in her office. And so since um, like the new year, right, she's painted a bunch of new paintings and she's going to do some more. And so we wanted to take you along um, on this energy office makeover in process. Um, and invite you if this speaks to you and if you are a forward-thinking individual who is interested in serving the highest and greatest good of yourself and those around you in the world in this lifetime that you will benefit greatly from connecting to your creator self in this way. So Laura, thank you for joining me for this and being up for this. Um, I don't know what we're doing here, you know, <laughs> flashes of like HGTV and DIY and you know, um, Bob Ross, and <laughs> who knows where it's going to go. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> no, glad to be here. And, uh, you know, like the, the shift that I felt like energetically in my office since we started to make this change has just been amazing. So, you know, glad to share it. That is awesome. That is so cool. So give us a little tour and maybe if you can also share with people, like, how did you feel about um, painting? you know, as of 2014, right? Like what was your relationship with the canvas? And um, and then, you know, kind of take us over that bridge that you crossed okay. over. Yeah, so um, like originally, I, I mean, I, I've always painted, I've always been kind of like artistic and stuff, but somewhere along the way, somewhere maybe where I ended up trying to teach myself physics in Italian, um, things, <laughs> things happened and it got pushed to the side, you know, like, in, and then, you know, when you become like a solopreneur and a business owner and, and things expand and grow, you, you have different priorities. So the, the creativity generally has been something that I allowed to lapse whilst I was getting other stuff going and so like meeting you at the airport that time with <laughs> like you going to APES? <laughs> I could tell you were awesome that's why <laughs> I really yeah, survived <laughs> but um that that was uh, an awakening and I mean like you you were just so passionate about painting and I'm like yeah that's something I used to do but you know th these conversations that we've had since and about symbolism and about shamanic painting and all that kind of thing it's kind of reignited the the desire to paint let alone everything else so yeah it's so so that's where I was 2014 and uh, as, as you know I've been uh, actually putting paint to canvas in, in the last months as well. So do you want to see the space? Yes, I do. Definitely show it. <laughs> cool. Okay, so whoops. We've we've got a detachable webcam here guys. Nice. Just marvel at the technology. <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't I'm I need to keep an eye on what, what I'm showing you. Okay, so I wasn't without any creativity. I don't know if you can see that there's a, a little vision board there on, on that wall. Um, but it's, I don't know, I think in the big scheme of things it's a bit lame. And uh, it was printed, printed paper, so like stuff printed off the printer and then stuck together, which as we've had, we've discussed since is kind of um, dead energy, isn't it? Like yeah. anything printed. Um, can I talk about my Doctor Who prints? Yes, yes. One second, let me just grab them. 
So I have to tell you all what she just referenced. Um, in the book Power Versus Force by Dr. David Hawkins, um, it has a whole chapter on uh, power and energy and artwork. And what it says is that in testing, they tested people, they muscle tested people in front of original paintings, like I'm surrounded by, and then just prints of the original paintings. And people tested strong in front of the original art, and they tested weak in front of the print. So um, the energy in original art <clears throat> is alive and active. And so when you consciously create the images that represent energetically and vibrationally the energy that you want to amplify in your life and in your work, you are just like strapping rocket boosters to whatever it is you're doing and helping it be that much more um, powerful and high vibration. So, wow, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. I I hadn't I didn't know that level of detail that they'd muscle tested it and it come out as well. That's awesome. And actually, do you know I I have felt the difference. I felt the difference. So I don't know whether you remember Whitney, but I had these. I'm a Doctor Who fan, for anyone who hasn't figured it out yet. <laughs> Not that I just want to run off with a, a man in a TARDIS, but... <laughs> so I had all of these up over on, on that far wall, and I was really reluctant to take them down, because obviously, you know, I've, I've procured these off the internet and spent money on them, but they're just prints, so... Right. You know, when, when you told me that, I was kind of heartbroken because I was going to have to take down my Doctor Who stuff. So um, one of my first paintings, uh, shall, I, shall I grab that one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this is something that will be common for many of you who choose to do this, is that you may feel a resistance to taking down items off your wall. Now, if Laura decides after surrounding herself with her own original art that she really wants those Doctor Who prints back, then for her, perhaps they are alive and you can hang them back up, right? Oh, you get in your stuff. Yeah, so what I just told people is that, you know, there may be something that you think, I've, I've got to have this up. Well, just take yeah. it down for the experience of understanding the room, you know, with your original artwork and exclusively. And then if it's really still speaking to you, I really do want these back up, then by all means, hang them back up, right? But what you may also experience, what Laura is starting to refer to, is that she feels a difference. And so potentially, the difference she's feeling is more valuable than looking at those Doctor Who prints in her office. Maybe they go somewhere else in your house, you know, that you get to see them. But this place where you are constantly creating and reaching out to the world, doing such powerful work, I want it to reflect that power and, and the uniqueness and the intensity of, you know, like the purity of the heart that you're working with. I want that reflected out to the world um, as you sit in that space. So, um, so it's being courageous enough to take the stuff down off the walls for the experience and then, then you decide because you're the artist of your life, right? If you want your prints back up, you can put them back up um, and you'll have new information as a result. Very cool. And, and new information is right, because as I was working on this one, the, um, the, the energy of infinite possibilities started springing up. And that's really what Doctor Who represents, and like the TARDIS, the heart of the TARDIS is source, source energy, and you know, all this kind of thing. And I don't know whether you can see up here, these are blue stars. These are the blue nice. ladies. They just kind of painted themselves in there for some reason. So. <laughs> But yeah, awesome. but what? But since this, since there are a few others that have, have kind of helped me shift energy as well. Since this, and since watching your video um, with the uh, everything's big in Texas, the what was it? Allison was it? Uh, the Pink Big Retreat. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, I've realised that this is way too small. Like even holding it now, I feel like wow this this could be much bigger because like energetically it needs to be like that right right apart awesome. from tardis tardis um dimensional jokes aside you know <laughs> exactly and here's a little tip for those of you um uh that 
uh, maybe you're in a space that you know you're not going to be in forever or something there is a, a resource called genie canvases or genie canvas i think it's geniecanvas.com and they're large you can get five foot square um stretched canvas that rolls up into a tube so you can paint on this huge painting and then have it completely portable um it costs like forty dollars to ship it um places so so anyway, so paint big for sure. That's awesome. I love that. I can't wait to see that painting. Nice. Cool. So another one, I think one of the exercises you set was about self-love. Yes. And so this is what came out there. And it's bizarre. It's like even without consciously kind of meditating on it, somehow you just kind of slip into the energy. You slip into whether it's an intention or whether it's just like a flow that you want to experience. And just by doing it, just by putting paint on the canvas, you, you seem to, or I, I seem to, um, start to embody it. Well, exactly right. So the time you spend at the canvas serves um, a many layered um, purposes because one is you're having a conversation with the canvas. And because you're speaking in the language of symbols and color and vibration, um, your higher self is able to communicate to you through sometimes apparently random thoughts, right? Um, or new thoughts or, or new levels of clarity around what it is that you want or what it is that you're passionate about sharing with the world. And so while you're painting, your thoughts are different. Okay? They're, they're just a higher frequency. And so in the process of painting, you are tapping into a different resource, the infinite mind, rather than just your logical mind. And the mm -hmm. other thing that's happening is the entire amount of time that you're spending at that canvas, whether it's in one sitting or over days and weeks, is time spent in meditation, connecting energetically to the vibration of that symbol. Mm -hmm. And self-love is one of those um, concepts that a lot of us have a really hard time with. and so. When you spend that amount of uh, time meditating on and thinking about self-love, things will come up around um, what might be keeping you from experiencing that unconditional love for yourself or kind of patterns that we all have, you know, where, wow, I get super critical about myself around this, or I start thinking thoughts around I'm really not good enough to get there exactly or be able to reach that many people. And so that bubbles up as you paint. And then as you paint, set the intention, you, you turn it around and think about what it is that you want. Because we would never paint an image of something that we don't want or we find ugly or repulsive mm -hmm. or, or angry. You know, we only paint what we want. So as we're painting what we want, we're thinking about what we want. And that is using the power of your imagination. Um, in your creative energy in the right direction instead of worrying and painting the picture and imagining the worst case scenarios or what you don't want to happen, right? So, uh, so a lot is happening when you're at the canvas and it's subtle and it's multidimensional and um, it can only support you. Nice. nice. Mm. Well, actually, I've had some healing. So there, there are two more that are unfinished. Um, but I, I have some healing through this one um, because, like, as, as it's probably obvious from these conversations that we're having, uh, I'm, I'm energetically sensitive, you're energetically sensitive. We can um, we pick up on other people's stuff. And one of the things that I was finding was that I was getting bombarded by other people's things, like their, their energies. And it was kind of pulling me down and confusing me and, and um, you know, I was having a rough time with it, coupled with the fact that I'd also had this massive shift. And so, like, my awareness had just, like, kind of exploded as well. So it was a little bit overwhelming. Um, but having conversations with a few people um, who were kind of very spiritually attuned, um, I started to do this this is a thing so um they said use use yellow energy for whatever reason it just seemed, seemed that yellow was the right kind of frequency to use to kind of keep washing down my own energy and and giving me the strength and the boundaries to kind of push everyone out oh boundaries yellow right so <laughs> okay so she makes the connection um so yeah this, this was what 
what helped me like creating this and doing the swirls and like taking my time over the swirls and letting the, the yellow kind of work back into everything else was really healing to to be able to do and yeah yeah it's interesting right so it's like as you um as you thought about how to communicate those boundaries that energetic protection on the canvas Right? You connect into how you can create that same energetic protection around you at all times um, without having to, you know, it's a subtle shift, right? It, without having to logically think, I've got to figure out how to create this energetic protection around me, but it just happens. Right. right? It's like this expansion, the intention of creating that protection for yourself as you paint just expands. And that's where I talk to people about the energy that you paint going out beyond the canvas into the art that is your life. And it just happens. It happens effortlessly. You don't have to try. That's logical right. mind stuff. You don't have to try and work at it. You're just opening up to a state of allowing and receiving. And yeah. this is this can be a different energy for a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, like you said, you know, we're doers, doers, doers. And um, and what I know for sure is, especially if you're watching this, you are here right now on this planet in this lifetime to really provide a great service for the entire world, no matter what you're doing. The fact that you're doing it authentically, that you're doing it on your terms, you're creating your reality to a large extent as a solopreneur. Um, or as a forward-thinking individual right now. And so when you connect with this ability you have that was not taught to us in school, right, mm -hmm. was not taught to us by our parents, we're just all learning this right now. Um, you are going to kind of have these downloads, right, for lack of a better word, downloads of understanding and clarity. And, um, and it's... It's not logical because that's already taken care of. You know how to find out information logically. This is learning how to also balance the logic with that infinite intuitive mind. So it can feel like magic. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I, I think it is magic because, like, you, I, I, even with doing that one and, like, just putting the paint onto the canvas and, and moving the brush, things seem to make sense so like I didn't get a, a, a like a straightforward understanding like this is this is what's going on and this is what you need to do about it it was just that something rejiggled it's like that you know how the brain tries to reinterpret like an energy that's coming in and just that process of, of, of trying I think maybe even just trying to experience it like visually and and through the movement of the paint and and how how is it going to flow on the canvas that process in itself was like um a, a way of assimilating the information that's coming in right right it's it, it's awesome it's so great it and i love listening to you describe it too because <laughs> i'm feeling like I'm like this, this has been on hold for a few weeks because I've had like workshops and, and traveling and stuff. Um, but I don't know whether you can see like my some one of the best things that you told me, like apart from the energy stuff, right, has been like practically how to go about it. And I was worried about getting paint all over the place and all over my office. And so I've got that kit. You see on that chair, there's a there, there are sheets. So there's right. that and there's there's that canvas drop canvas sheet that you um, you recommended. And honestly, like in terms of peace of mind, when you're you're wanting to kind of settle and do your painting and get you know be creative and let go, having those around like one on the floor and one all over the desk and everything else out of the way, it's just it's like a safe space. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what that's part of what this is. It's all about creating space. It's creating space for you to expand into new um, potential, you know, new creative power and how to bring that into your physical space because I know a lot of people are like, I don't have the time, I don't have the space and those are all things that we can work with. Um, so when you do, um, if you want to contact me at WhitneyFreya.com, there's a contact page and just contact me about doing an energetic office or an energetic space makeover. Um, what I will do, what I do provide is like a very specific uh, supply list. Um, we touch base for a short, you know, kind of one hour Skype like this where I'm able to 
help you decide and uh, make a list of exactly what you need, you know, the size canvases, where we're going to hang them, help you take everything down, right? And then in the day we spend together, you will have the canvases, all the canvases that you literally will have already hung up on the wall blank. And then I guide you through how to create that first layer. And then during the day together, we intentionally decide upon and create the symbols or the images um, like Laura's uh, done with the energetic boundaries and the Doctor Who and the self-love. Um, so that then by the end of the day, you have paintings, all the paintings started that are in your room. It's not finished, but you will probably be finishing those. And then we do kind of a bookend um, check-in as well, like at the beginning. So um, all of those kind of normal excuses are absolutely no problem. I take care of those for you. Um, and then in the end, you've had the most radical transformation in, um, in your space, and it will make a difference. So, so Laura, what do we want to show them now? Um, because I know you got some new blank canvases and you wrestled up a hammer and nails. Um, so <laughs> <I did. laughs> do, do you want to try and figure out how to do that? Do yeah, and that? I think we could, um, we could focus on your blue wall, right? So, this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's so do it. How, how does that feel? Okay. Yeah, So. Of course. Um, so you can get the new canvases that you bought yeah. and whatever else you want to hang there and we can get them all hung up um, okay. to kind of demonstrate for people. Cool. So, so I won't be able to hear you because of the, the echoes and, and headphones. Do we want to end this video and then like restart when we're when we're all hung up? Right, right. So um <laughs> for sure, why don't we do that? Why Let's don't do that. We, um, why don't we do that and um and then we'll explain to you all once we come back, you know, kind of um, how to do this. Because I know sometimes there are some really basic things that end up getting us off track and like, oh, I don't know what to do. So um, so that sounds like a good idea. So stay tuned or check in with the next video and you can see what Laura's office looks like um, in about 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, awesome. I'm going to stop the podcast. You can go to WhitneyFreya.com if you want to learn more information right now.